form 2 first term English language unit 2.3 the lesson is how to explore your CD-ROM what are the lesson objectives under text level work uh, we are going to discuss about the comprehension text and writing instructions then uh, you will be able to learn some new vocabulary words and under spelling section you will be able to learn words with double L and finally under grammar and punctuation we are going to talk about simple future tense first we will look at the comprehension text you can refer to your textbook page 35 uh, this comprehension text has taken from the Sunday Times magazine on 23rd September 2001 in that magazine there is a separate section called journey into space there you can find this article how in uh, CD-ROM about the CD-ROM how to explore your CD-ROM window on the universe so here you can see there are seven instructions for PC users who are PC users personal computer users so uh, the first step is about inserting the window on the universe w-o-u now you can see this word everywhere in this text you can see the short form abbreviation of this phrase window on the universe so it appears as w-o-u so uh, the first step is how to insert it into your uh, computer then if you look at the second step in order to run this CD-ROM you will need to have a browser compatible so to run this one you your computer should have a browser so you can use Netscape v4 or Microsoft Internet Explorer v4 browser and if you do not or do, if you do not already have the following you will also need to install you need to install some other uh, softwares like Adobe Acrobat Reader v54 to use the worksheets and real networks real player v8 to see the videos and animations and macromedia shockwave v8 to see the play games likewise you need to install these other softwares also then you have third step fourth fifth sixth seventh like this way there are seven instructions so you all can read this one and you can get an idea then uh, we will move to the next one yes next page page 36 is about the instructions for Mac users there are also you can find seven instructions you can read them and can get an idea now when you are reading uh, can you find imperative sentences in these sen instructions now when you are reading these instructions can you find imperative sentences yes first of all do you know what are imperative sentences yes you should know imperative sentences are just like commands in imperative sentences you normally you can't find a subject always an imperative sentence begins with the verb so in these instructions also you can find imperative sentences like this double click the launch v w o u icon there you can't find a subject it starts with the verb so it's just like giving a command then we can find the one keep the cd-rom in the drive and insert the 
W O U C D ROM. All these sentences are imperative sentences. Okay, now let us look at these questions. Uh, first question is by what initials is the CD ROM window on the universe referred to throughout the instructions? So, what are the initials? I told you. Uh, what are the initials that we can use for this phrase window on the universe? Second one, what browser do you need to have to run this CD-ROM? So, uh, you can find the answer for this question if you read the second instruction for PC users. Then the third question is, what software do you need for the worksheets? the videos, the games. Very clearly you can find answers for this, these questions if you read the second instruction for PC users again. Not only for PC users instructions, you can refer to Mac users instructions also. There also you can find the same answer. Then the fourth, fourth one, once you have a rocket on the screen, what must you do to enter the guided tour? So, please read the fifth instruction on page 35. You can find the answer for this question. Last question is, if you want to look at the CD-ROM again, do you have to reinstall the software? Here, you can find this answer also if you read the last instruction it means the seventh instruction on page 35 for pc users then after you find the answers for these questions you can find answers for the questions in b and c so they are the important points we have discussed like imperative sentences so, you can find, easily you can find answers for those questions also. So, try answers for all these questions. Next section is vocabulary. There are 12 words in your textbook from the comprehension text. So, you can refer to a dictionary and can find meanings for these words. First, we will read them. Insert, prompted, relevant, specification, enabled, maximize, preferred, express, compatible, reinstall, animations, ensure. You need to find the meanings and also you need to study the spellings of these words. Okay, now we will move to the spelling section. What are the words with double L? Yes, you can see some words. Let's read them. Follow, install, alliteration, pollution, collect, village, balloon, shallow, pillow. So, you can find more than these words and you need to use these keywords in sentences of your own. You need to make sentences by using these words. Okay, now we are going to discuss the grammar section. Now, if you look at this picture, I think everyone knows this one. Yes, your favorite, maybe your favorite cartoon characters are there, Garfield and Odie. So, what does Garfield tell? I am so sleepy and tired. Garfield is telling I am so sleepy and I am too tired. So, what was the reply from Odie? I will get you some coffee. So, Odie is telling I will bring you, I will make you a coffee. So, this OD is going to do something. So, what is the tense of this sentence? I will get you some coffee. I will make you. 
Yes, we call that one as simple future tense. How can you identify simple future tense? Using the verb will. So, is there any other helping verb to identify future tense? Yes, you can identify it using shall also. Normally with I and V, we use shall. I shall, we shall. And with you, he, she, it and they, we use will. So, we use shall and will to identify simple future tense. So, what is the verb structure of a simple future tense verb sentence? Yes, you can use will or shall plus base form of the verb. I will get. Get is the base, simple present form of the verb. So, this is the structure of a simple future tense verb. Now, look at these example sentences. Look at the first two example sentences. It will rain tomorrow. And the second one is I shall do the ironing. So, you know the verb structure will plus base form of the verb will rain shall do. So, how can we call these types of sentences? We call them as simple future tense or simple future sentences. Now, look at the second set. There, I add something more. Let us read. It will not rain tomorrow. Second one is, I shall not do the ironing. There, I at the word not in between the helping verb will and shall and the main verb. So, after we add this word, we get a negative idea, negative meaning. So, we call these types of sentences as negative form, negative form of the simple future tense. So, to make the negative form, we need to add not in between the helping verb and the main verb. So, you know uh, will not, shall not. Now, if you want to contract this one will not, if you want to make it short, can we write it as villain't, will not? No, we can't write it as villain't. You need to remember these two. What is the contracted form of will not? It is won't. W O N apostrophe T and shall not, the contracted form of shall not is shan't, S H A N apostrophe T. So, you know the simple future structure, verb structure, and simple future negative form verb structure. Yes, now our sentence is it will rain tomorrow. Now, I have underlined the verb phrase will rain. You have the helping verb will and the main verb rain. From this sentence, I want to make a question. Do you know how to make a question from this sentence? Yes, it is easy. Now, the verb phrase, in the verb phrase, we have two verbs, words. So, to make a question, we want to take the helping verb. What is the helping verb here? Helping verb is will. You need to take this helping verb to the beginning of the sentence. So, after you take the helping verb, the question is will it rain tomorrow? Then you can make an question using shall. Shall I do the ironing? So, these types of questions, we call them as interrogative form. They are in interrogative form. So, now you know the simple future and the form and the interrogative form. So, you can try to do the activity in your textbook page 38. There is a table. You have to 
make convert these sentences into negative form and negative form. Next one is writing instructions. Now you need to practice writing instructions. So you can uh, use these language features when you are writing instructions. First one is the structure. Uh, in the structure you need to write the instructions in an order like step 1, 2, 3. Then you can use imperative verbs. We discussed what are imperative sentences giving commands like so you can use imperative verbs and the third one is sentence types. When we write instructions, normally we do not write questions. We use statements. It means simple sentences. So you can use sentences. And the last one is abbreviations. Abbreviations are uh, short words. It means uh, sometimes the, some long phrases we short them into two three letters like cd rom uh, pc users those ones are abbreviations so you can use abbreviations when you are writing instructions so you can do this activity using a computer in school or at home write a set of detailed instructions for one of the following so you can select one and can write instructions First one is how to get your computer to print, how to take a printout. You need to write the instructions. Then second one is how to get onto the internet. And the last one is how to send an email. So you can select one topic and can write detailed instructions to go to those uh, things. It means the places. This is the end of my presentation. Thank you.